Hello, hello everyone, my name is Laura, this is my channel, Laura's Little Library, and welcome to today's video, the mid-year book freakout tag. So this video is going up a little bit past the mid-year point, because I really wanted to make sure that I actually have all the stats from the full first half of the year and also I finally have time to start filming again so woohoo anyway so first off I'm gonna start with a couple updates that are not the tag mostly that I am at 42 books out of my 100 book goal so I am a little behind but I have been getting back into a reading phase so I think I still have a shot of actually completing my goal. Over the summer I read probably two books but part of that was because I was traveling over the summer which is also why I wasn't posting but now I am back home. I will be back home for a while. School has started but I am reading books for school but that also means I have my long commute which means audiobooks. So I'm back into reading. I'm back to booktube. I'm super excited, super happy about it. Anyway, so yes, I am almost halfway through my goal for the year, but fall is always where I do the most amount of my reading, partially because of the spooky books and the cozy autumn books, everything like that, and also because craziness of the summer does tend to calm down. The second update I want to say is just tell you what my current read is. I think it would be really fun to just tell you what I'm currently reading at the beginning of every video, whether it's related or not. Um, just because I'm always curious like what people are reading in the moment. So right now I am reading The Secret History by Donna Tartt. I am super excited and I'll probably talk a little bit more in my fall video, which will probably be going up after this one where I am decorating everything for fall and just getting the house ready. But without further ado, let's finally get into this tag. So the first book is, or the first question is, what is the best book you've read this year? And actually, this is kind of a surprise, but it's All That Consumes Us. It is a dark academia that I thought I would like. I didn't realize just how much I would love it. And so when I was looking at all of my favorite books that I've read so far this year, like all of my five stars, I saw this one and I was like, nothing has really been better than it. Like I, it's, the book is all that consumes us. It consumed me. I was so invested. Now granted, this book being a dark academia with a focus on like language and literature, of course it was going to be a book that I loved. Like honestly, just knowing that about it was enough for me to read it and I ended up enjoying the writing style, the characters were interesting to me, so this was probably my best book so far this year. Number two, the best sequel that you've read so far this year. I would say, honestly, This Cursed Light by Emily Feed, which is amazing because I don't typically like sequels as much. Like, I'm always the biggest fan of the first book, but I think the way, the direction that this book went in was a great way to wrap up this duology, and it was a good book on its own. Like, obviously, you need to read the first book to know the back story of what's happening but this is really what gets into the meat of the plot that's kind of introduced at the end of the first book and I just loved how it continued on and it was such a good resolution of the cliffhanger from the first book and I just I thoroughly enjoyed reading this so yeah next is a new release that you have not read yet and I am quite ashamed to say that I haven't read this book yet I've owned it for quite a while I love this author and her other duology was like my favorite duology for the longest time. It might be my favorite duology, even if it's not necessarily my favorite book. But anyway, The Hemlock Queen by Hannah Witten. I cannot believe I haven't read this yet. Like, it is the second book in the Nightshade Crown series. And I loved the first book. And like I said, I loved her other duology. I just... It's a bit of a thicker book and I want to give it its due time. I didn't want to force myself to it and because I was a, I was in a bit of a reading slump, I haven't really gotten around to it, but hopefully I will get to it this year because all the reasons I've said before. And I mean, come on, look, it's a gorgeous book. So hopefully I'll be getting to this 
soon because it did come out quite a bit earlier this year and it's been on my TBR cart for like forever now. Then your most anticipated release for the second half of this year. Uh, it's another sequel. There are a lot of sequels in this video I'm realizing and I'm kind of proud of myself for that. I'm, I'm, I'm good with that. But the most anticipated release I have for this second half of the year is actually the sequel to uh, What the River Knows. It's called Where the Library Hides by Isabella Ibanez. And this is your like Indiana Jones, Latina main character. Uh, and this one, it was Egyptian mythology. So she goes to Egypt to uncover the secrets that her parents died trying to uncover. There is betrayal, there is love, there is mythology and archaeology and just oh, tickles me in all the right places. And I, I liked how this book was written, but I'm really excited for the second book because, you know, an author's writing style always gets better for the second book. So I'm looking forward to the second one. Next up is what was your biggest disappointment? And I will have to say To Kill a Shadow by Katherine Quinn was actually my biggest disappointment. It is a beautiful book. It has sprayed edges. I did actually get this mixed up with another book when I was purchasing it, but then I read uh, the synopsis for this one and I thought it was very intriguing. And then I read it and I could not tell you a single thing about it. I felt it was very forgettable. I don't remember the characters' names. I don't even remember what the plot was about. I just remember being pretty disappointed with it. Like, I just feel like there wasn't much new from it to offer the reading community in the world um, for readers who like fantasy, so I was pretty disappointed. Then the next one is the biggest surprise of the year, and I have to say, it was That's Not My Name by Megan Lally. I read thriller, I enjoy thriller, but I'm definitely like a seasonal thriller or I'm very particular with my thrillers, like the synopsis just really needs to capture me if I'm going to pick it up, because I feel like a lot of thrillers can be very similar. And so when I read the synopsis for this one, I didn't think it was actually going to be that interesting, I didn't think it was going to capture me, because it sounded kind of plain. I watch a lot of crime TV and television which is probably why I don't read a lot of thrillers. But I heard such good things about this book from people who read it, especially when it came to like the writing style. So I thought, you know what, I'll give it a chance. And I picked it up and I am so glad I did because I did end up loving this way more than I thought I was going to. And you are following two POVs and it's about a girl who goes missing and a girl who wakes up and she doesn't know what her name is and then somebody comes to the police station and says yeah you're my daughter and you just you feel off you feel fishy you're just you're in suspense kind of the whole time because you have people looking for her but you have her trying to figure it all out so yeah that's all i'm gonna say um i promise i did not spoil the book yeah this was a huge surprise just because of how much i loved it even though it didn't sound interesting going in it ended up being so interesting i could not put it down Next is your fa new favorite author, and I have been doing a lot of reading of authors that I already know I love, but one author that I picked up, the first book in her series, she's got a huge series, and I actually met her, and she's lovely, um, and her name is Laura Child, and she wrote Death by Darjeeling, and it's a whole, like, tea shop cozy mystery series, and I really liked it, you know, you're in this, like, North Carolina, small rainy town, there's a murder, there's a tea shop with pastries, and it was just really cozy, and you follow your main character who's the owner of the tea shop, and she is trying to solve the mystery, but she's like an older, sophisticated woman. Oh, I loved it. So I'm really excited to keep going with the series as the titles are all tea-themed and recipes included. How can you go wrong? Next is your newest fictional crush. I don't really crush on characters too much, it's not a common thing, but I will say one of my favorite love interests was Envy <laughs> from Throne of the Fallen by Carrie Maniscalco. I feel like for me, this book, in terms of Envy as being like the love interest and everything, it's just so much a guilty pleasure. I can't tell you why I love it. I just know that I do and that I'm okay with it. Like, if you've read any Carrie Maniscalco, you, you know what's going on. I don't need to explain it to you. And if you haven't, 
you should, but if you're not interested, then you're just never gonna get it, so. Moving on. A uh, new favorite main character is actually going to be Chani. From Her Radiant Curse by Elizabeth Lim, I'm holding up the Dragon Promise because I don't actually have a copy of Her Radiant Curse, mostly because I prefer the UK covers. I think it's just the pastels are just so pretty and I love how they look on my shelves and how they look together and I wanna be consistent. So I have yet to find access to the UK cover here in the States, <laughs> but uh, she is in this book, but um, she's kind of the villain character in this book versus her Radiant Curse is her backstory. And wow, wow, was it an amazing backstory that I did not know I needed. Next up is a book that made you cry. Again, kind of like similar with the fictional favorite or love interest character, fictional crush. I don't really cry a lot for books, even if they're super sad. I'm just not that much of a crier and it's the same with like television too. I just, I'll be really sad if I don't cry. But there was one book that got me real close to tears. I was on the verge. I had to like take a break, surprisingly. And it was A Fragile Enchantment by Alison Saft. You know, this is very obvious how it's based off of certain historical events but put in a like fantasy world but it is extremely similar with the cultures that it uses to actual historical events. Um, and some of that kind of hit home for me personally a little bit. So that's why like I had such a connection with this book because of like my family, my heritage, my ancestry and things like that. And that was represented, but in this fantasy book and it just, it was so sad, it made me cry, but it's also a phenomenal book. Like I also loved it and the romance is sweet and charming and the writing is good and the world building and blah, blah, blah. But this is the closest. Um, and I highly recommend everyone to read it because it is just a good, like kind of spring fresh romance book, fantasy, so. And then a book that made you happy and of course, Emily Wilde's Map of the Otherlands by Heather Fawcett. This made me very happy. Purchasing made me happy. Reading it made me happy. Anytime I look at it, I, I'm just happy. It is such a cozy fantasy series and I, I'm just excited for more. Like, read the first book if you haven't. If you had, read this one. If you haven't, if you had, then we can wait for the next one together. All right, getting close to the end. This next one is the prettiest book that you bought this year. And let me tell you, I was spoiled. I was lucky with this, okay? So here, let me let me tell you the story. I live in Michigan. I have a friend who lives in Illinois outside of Chicago. She had a choir concert. So we went to go visit her for a choir concert. We've been meaning to do it all year and we just hadn't. This past spring, we finally, finally, got out there for a choir concert. Now, it also happened to be a little bit past my birthday. And the kind human that she is, she got me a half price books gift card. So kind and sweet of her. We don't have half price books here in Michigan, but they had it in Illinois, hence why she was able to get the gift card. So then I had to go shopping that weekend with her in order to use the gift card because I don't go to Illinois very often, or at least not near as often as I want to, nor other states that have half price books. And so we went together on this little impromptu shopping trip, trying to go fast, because you know, she has a choir concert, and we stumbled upon this, The Scarlet Alchemist by Kylie Lee Baker. And just the cover is beautiful, right? This was like, an it's a fairy loot edition and I don't have any bookish subscription so I don't get pretty books from fairy loot or owl crate or any of those so anytime I see one of these books it's always a must and it was a half price books and I had a gift card but not only is the cover absolutely gorgeous but the sprayed edges though look at that look at that so this is definitely one of the prettiest books that I own period and it was one that I got this year. So, prettiest book that I bought. All the stars aligned to gift me with this wonderful book. And I also read it. After I purchased it, I read it and I ended up loving it. Again, I wasn't super sure I was gonna love it. I don't know why, because looking back, the synopsis is perfectly down my alley. And so I read it, I loved it. The book, the writing itself is as beautiful as this edition. 
And then the final question is, what are some other books you have yet to read this year or that you want to read before the end of the year? And with it being autumn, obviously I have a lot of spooky and cozy books that I want to get to, but that mostly belongs in a TBR video because otherwise this would be like two videos in one. So I'm just going to have two books that I want to read at the end of the year. One is a cozy autumnal and one is a fantasy that I'll probably read more around winter. So that is Can't Spell Treason Without Tea by Rebecca Thorne. Very much in that same cozy fantasy world as Legends and Lattes. It's very much like Legends and Lattes-esque. You know, you kind of got your fantasy classic D&D type world, but this is with tea. So I think this is going to be a cozy fantasy, good autumnal read. I will read it with a cup of tea. I'm very excited. And actually, I think I just got the audiobook for it so I can read it physically and the audiobook at the same time which I love. It's just such an immersive experience especially for something as cozy as this. And then the final book that I want to read is The Serpents and the Wings of Night by Carissa Brodbent. Brodbent? Yes. Um, this is actually the book that I meant to get when I bought To Kill a Shadow. The cover seems similar and I knew it was like a longer title. I'm sorry but this i I believe has to do with dragons and honestly this was a very big popular book a lot of people were purchasing it but I don't really know how a lot of people felt about it I think a lot of people liked it though but yeah you know good fantasy dragon book I'm here for it so I'll probably read this in winter just because the cover gives me more of a winter vibe and there are so many cozy and spooky books that I want to read in autumn so there you go for the final two seasons final two books Alright, thank you all so much for watching this video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Feel free to comment down below any answers you have to these questions. I always love to hear from you. If you like bookish content like this, hit the subscribe button. I am hoping to go back to posting at least one video a week. I will do my darndest to do so. And yeah, until I see you all in the next video, I wish you happy reading.